Hi, this is artist Katana Lee, and I'd like to invite you to paint in Hawaii. Living my best life, yeah. It was one of the most gorgeous things I've seen in my life besides myself. <laughs> I love it. And I was like, this is such a great day. This is such a great day. And I like stopped at this part here on the bench and I took some photos of the couple that was there. I was like, do you guys want a photo together since you're here? And I took their picture and then I continued on. And when I came back, they were gone, but the rainbow was there instead. And I was like, Hawaii is showing off for me. Um, like, it just felt like the place was happy I was there and wanted to tell me about it. So now we're going to re experience this day together. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do the ocean part first. And actually one thing that I did in the painting that is not in the photo is that there's a gradient from the ocean to the sky, but the sky disappears. And so um, there's no real horizon line. Like, look, I put in that horizon line. Oh, good, Mary doesn't need the photo, yay. Um, so I put in a horizon line in the painting, but in the, in the photo, there is no horizon line. So um, I'd like to not do a horizon line for our purposes here. Um, I'd like to go from this blue straight into the sky or from the sky into the ocean. Um, it's gonna be the sky into the ocean because we're gonna start with the light color and go to that deeper teal color. So um, start, uh, well, real quick to start, we've got our three brushes, big, medium, small. I like the ones that are flat, kind of brushes, they don't have any roundedness to them. And then I've got a used palette, but I've got my red, yellow, blue primary colors, black and white. This teal is dry, just ignore that it's there. Um, I'm trying to conserve resources, which means reusing my paper plate today. So I'm gonna start with my big brush and I'm gonna get my canvas wet on the left hand side so everything that the sky is and the water is we're going to get that a little bit wet so if i was going to draw a 45 degree line across the canvas i would fill up the top left side loosely with water so now we got water on our canvas and we're going to put um we're going to paint water on our canvas like a pun so i'm going to start with a little bit of blue I get a little bit of blue and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to my blue. So it's going to be a little tinge of green. That's too green. So now it needs more blue. And that's going to go on the bottom left. Back and forth the bottom left. And then I'm going to start adding white. So I started with the teal, that's blue with just a little bit of yellow and almost to the bottom, but not quite. And once I get the color on there, I'm using horizontal brush strokes smoothly back and forth, working my way from bottom to top. And as I get toward the middle, I'm adding white. And I like that it's a little bit streaky for me, that is appealing. And then as I get towards the top, it's going to be all white. And the more I just go over it back and forth, these smooth brush strokes back and forth, it's very calming and relaxing and my canvas gets smoother and smoother. When you're done, um, we're gonna wash the brush. 
And we're gonna let that dry. I think we'll put in a little bit of like the blue in the sky after the ocean dries. I usually do the sky first, um, but I wanted to see that how that gradient from teal to white looked. Um, and I kind of would be okay with uh, just white, but usually people are liking it better if I paint the whole sky. So let's actually mark in our mountains. I call them mountains, but they're actually cliffside. They're like Napali, the cliffs. So when I'm drawing something, I is usually switching to a more narrow brush. So we're gonna do a green to outline Nepali. So it's yellow and blue. And I'm gonna make it over here. And I like a nice bright summery green, plenty yellow. And what we're going to do is decide where our main cliff is going to be. There's one main cliff. It's right in the middle. And it comes at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to overlap some of my ocean. So there's my line in green. And I overlap some of my ocean. And then it's gonna go up off the canvas here. And I'm going to make that bright green here. I'm gonna add some texture. Instead of doing a line, I'm going to like make it spotted. See how now that line is bumpy? It's because there's foliage on this cliff. And while I'm at it, I'm going to put some little dots around here. We can fill that in later. We don't have to fill it in all right now. I'd more like to get the established, um, establish the land before we start filling things in. And then we're gonna make a slightly shallower angle here. So if you were falling down this cliff and you got to here, you would be like, oh, I'm falling less down the cliff. So see how this part's steep and it becomes more shallow here? It's sort of like a hockey stick shape. And then at the bend in the hockey stick, we're gonna take the yellow and we're gonna make a little pile of brush marks here in that light, light yellow. It'll have a little green in it because I did not wash my brush. So here I've got some yellow. This is actually the foot of the cliff. And we're going to continue by making a lot of that yellowy green right near the bottom. Up a little on the right, that yellow green. All the way to the bottom here and then rising up a little bit towards that um, hockey stick shape.
And again, we can take some of that yellow green and on this side, it can go right on top of the ocean in a bumpy dab line. So I'm not drawing a line, I'm making lots of little brush marks close together, some tall, some short, right off the edge of the canvas. Okay, so now that we are here, we've got two cliffs. We've got our valley floor, we've got the um, cliff that we're standing on, and we're gonna do the little cliff that jets out into the ocean. And I still have green on my brush, yeah? So I'm gonna add a little bit of black to that green and a little bit of blue. <clears throat> so the idea is we're having dark green. So that um, I made the cliff brown here, but every time I look at my demo painting, I'm like, that doesn't feel right. So for our painting today, we're gonna use um, a dark green, uh, a dark bluish green. It should be kind of on the side of blue in that dark green. So green plus a little bit of black. And from the corner of this cliff, we're gonna bring our eye down just about an inch. And we're gonna do a small jutting outline like this. So see how it's, it angles down and then it takes a little bit of a smile. That's what we're gonna do there. And then once we've got that little, the top of our cliff, we're gonna do again, a little line down, but it's gonna angle out. And then it's going to angle out a little bit and then it's going to go a little bit more straight down. And then it, it's got a little foot. See, I just make a little bulb, press a little harder to make a little foot at the foot of the cliff. <laughs> then we're going to draw a line back and connect that to the, to the land. And we're gonna color in this part. So we're gonna color in a, like a little bit next to the cliff. It's not a right, like it's not the most regular shape. So it's sort of a thicker line next to the cliff, but because it's um, got a, a cliff is not a smooth surface, so it's a little bit bumpy here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white. I'll just wait a second. Then I'm adding a little bit of white to my color to color in the rest of that. That's too light. There we go. I'm aiming more for a darker gray for a coloring in the cliff. So we'll hold that a little closer. So it's dark here and light here. Um, we're gonna put a little mokupuni back here. That's one little island, tiny little island. Li'i li'i mokupuni, or no, mokupuni li'i li'i. My Hawaiian needs to improve so much, but this is how it improves by trying. Everything improves with trying. I hope that one day I can look back on my archives of Paint Hawaii videos and be like, wow, you were really bad at speaking Hawaiian. And I'll say that in fluent Hawaiian. Goals. Okay, so we're going to put a little island. It actually goes right here. There's like a little gray, very light gray, little um, little shape back here. See how it's a bump? but it goes to a straight line right back here. Let's make another little point on that one. Like that. It's the same shape as this, but it has one extra little point here and it's smaller back there. And the reason I didn't wash my brush is because it's got this grayish blue on it, that light gray that we had before. So I'm going to take that light gray and make a little green and it's going to be like more of a muted green because it's got a little gray in it. So let's say I had a little bit of gray 
and I mixed it with my light green. I will use that to color in this mountain. And then I will wash my brush. So I've got a kind of a harsh transition between those two greens on that cliff that we just filled in. So what I would like to do is make a transitional green. And this will be good if your paint is not blending very well. A transitional green is adding some yellow to that green that I made. I guess I didn't need to wash my brush, but I wanted to. And that transitional green I'm going to put here in little spots in between those two greens to make the edge a little bit softer. And I can also take that green and make some little um, marks in my dark green so that there's a little bit of texture in there. Not a lot though, because it's far away and the farther away things are, the more smooth they look. And that's why um, uh, you cannot see things clearly far away is because there's the atmosphere in between us and them. It's sort of like a filter. If we had no atmosphere, things would be in sharp relief from a distance if you had good eyesight. Let's make um, a dark green again, which is yellow and blue and black. Every time we mix our colors again, they're gonna turn out a little bit differently before. And when we're doing foliage, which has a lot of different shades of green, um, we wanna have as many greens as possible. So mixing one perfect green is actually the wrong thing to do. Mixing 50 wrong greens would be the right thing to do because they're all different. Um, so uh, we are celebrating our differences with green and putting in, see where we had all those spots on this cliff face before? We're gonna put in more dabs of green here, many of them. Building a painting, one brush stroke at a time. So one thing you can do is uh, put some green on top of the green lines that we started with um, because it's better to have lots of small texture marks than a, a green line. Some parts can be more darker green than others. And stay out of the valley, stay out of this part. Keep your dark greens on the hillside for now. We'll address the, the valley here. Um, but if you already got a greens there, it doesn't matter because we're going to just put more greens on top of it. So I think what I'm trying to say is paint it green where it's green. And if I haven't talked about it yet, um, we'll paint more green there later. <laughs> Lots of green. <laughs> 
so I want my cliff side to be darker green than <clears throat> the other parts that we've done so far with lots of texture. Okay, so now I got my whole cliff side painted green and I'm gonna make a very bright jungle green to paint the jungle on the, on the bottom. So this one doesn't have black in it. It's green without black. There are some shadowy parts, um, which I will get to. I'm gonna add the shadows after I do the green here. So if you already have some darker green shadowy parts, that's okay. We're gonna add that in. It's gonna happen. It'll all come together at the end. And if it hasn't come together, it's not the end. So to make the shadowy parts in my cliff, I'm going to get that green, that dark green back. And this one's going to have a little bit more blue in it. And underneath this part, I'm going to put in some little, is that too blue? I feel like that's too blue. I'm not trying to put the ocean into the cliffs. I don't like that color either, so I'm going to wipe it away. Bye. So I described the color I want now. That's a better color. Put some of that in here and some of that here. Maybe a little bit over here. And these are all small brush strokes. I'm actually adding smaller marks in and around them. So I don't want, I want to break up the big shapes with small marks around their edges. Because those small marks look like details. And that's a direct quote from Ian Kloster, who's an artist that taught me how to teach painting. Um, Alison Ann McCrink is also one of the artists that taught me how to teach painting. Uh, she does a lot of abstract work now. I'm not sure if she's still teaching, um, but she's also uh, wonderful with the creative. She's on my Facebook page if you guys like to add artists. And then I'm just going to add in some more little yellows in here. I'm just adding, now that I've got all my greens and I'm going to go in and add small marks with the brights. I'm adding small marks with the darks and then I added small marks with the brights. What if you added white to your light colors? Let's find out. Now I got a very light green. And I'm going to put some of that light whiter green up here with my little bright colors there. These are a different kind of tree over here than the trees over here, I think, is what's happening. Maybe I'd like some light trees on my cliff. Maybe I'd like some yellow and white on the top of my cliff here. So adding a little bit of that yellow and white up at the top of that cliff helps pop this cliff out in front of the cliff behind it. Yes. 
So it's gonna make it a little bit brownish because I uh, didn't wash my brush and that's fine. I'm gonna first color in this whole area with that brownish color that I just made with the red and the yellow and a dirty brush. And when I'm coloring it in, I'm using little circular motions, kind of like scrubbing it, wax on kind of motions. And I'd like some of this color over here in the corner where I've got that light green also. So let's add some grasses into the dirt and I'm gonna add some white to my muddy color. And that's gonna give me a Excuse light. Excuse me, how do, you, how do you make, what color is dirt? What colors to make dirt? Um, yellow and red um, is gonna make orange. And then if you add a little bit of black, it's gonna turn brown. Or okay. if your brush was dirty, it would, like it would turn muddy colored anyways because it wasn't mixed, or it wasn't a clean mix. So once you've got orange, okay. if you add a little black, it'll turn kind of a dirty color. And then if you add white, it'll turn a lighter color of the same shade. And a little bit more yellow will make a nice goldenrod color. Um, and then I'm gonna add some little, little streaks like this. So I'm just adding little texture with short uh, stubby lines. Okay. Maybe some of them could be more orange. And see how the background color is still showing through the grasses I'm adding? So it looks like there's like a whole bunch of plants there. Little plants, little sticks, little grasses. I did notice something that I wanted to add to this painting that we didn't do. And that's gonna be with just the regular blue. Regular blue, we're gonna put underneath this cliff some horizontal blue, darker blue than we have in the ocean, marks so that this cliff is in shadow, or the water is in shadow from that cliff. So see how they're all horizontal little marks, and they're, um, every second one is a little bit longer on the outside, so that um, it looks like there's ripples in the water and a shadow on the water from that mountainside. I could also put some blue onto that cliff also. White, we're gonna add in on the lower part of that hockey stick, the valley floor right here, this section right here, we're gonna add the shore break. So that's gonna be like um, a small row of dots next to the line there. Uh huh. And then right behind it, we're gonna leave a little space and do another one that's a little bit shorter. Up close, it just doesn't look like anything. It's like too 
irregular lines made of like little dots. But when you bring it out, it becomes the shore break. Surfers go down there, the ones that are good, they go surfing in Polulu. One day I would like to surf in Polulu, but I'd like to do it without dying and I'm not qualified for that. <laughs> we can also put some little um, break right here, right at the foot of the poly, at the foot of the cliff, little white triangle there. And it's gonna go into the shadow a little. Did you guys wanna add in some light blue sky? Sure. Okay. So that's going to be with lots of white and a little bit of blue, not green, blue. So I put lots of white up there and I'm going to smear it around with my big brush. I need more white. And it might go into, you might want to lower your horizon line so that you can have more sky. That's up to you. I'm going to leave a little bit of white next to the cliffs. I think it makes a nice little glow around them. But if you wanted to trim your cliffs in any way, that would be how you can paint over. <laughs> so I really want this guy to be pretty light colored because our emphasis is going to be with the rainbow. I would like to take a little bit of that sky blue color that we just used and put a few little marks next to the cliff here. See how I'm holding my brush and just gently adding in a few little marks horizontally in the water because that creates some texture on the surface of the water and that's going to give it a little bit more depth than what we have already. I'm not using a lot of paint. It's kind of a dry brush. It's sort of just skating over the top of the color. So I'm just adding a little bit of reflections from the sky into the water for depth. I'm going to talk a little bit about this rainbow here. I feel like this is a little bit of a steep rainbow and I'd really like it to be a little bit more of an arc than a circle. So, but rainbows are just part of a circle anyways. Um, so I think, I, I mean, I want it to be like less of the whole circle and more. Mm, I'm going to show you instead of talking about it. So that's going to be, I'd like, I'd like my rainbow to go here because I've got a lot of open space there. And it's going to go into the cliff just a little bit. And I'm doing it first with white a little bit, and I'm to establish where it's going. So I'm going to go first for yellow. And my brush still has white on it, so it's gonna actually be a really bright yellow. And the yellow is gonna go right in the middle of the rainbow. And then from yellow, we're gonna do orange, which is yellow and red and white. And the reason I'm adding white to all of the colors is because it's a rainbow. The colors are very soft and pastel. And the orange goes above the yellow. It does not need to be a very strong orange at all. And then I will wash my brush. So <coughs> I probably should have switched to the smaller brush. You may have figured it out already that you prefer the smaller brush for this purpose. Um, I sometimes forget. Um, so we're going to go for light red, also known as pink, and we will put it on the very top arc of the rainbow. It's okay if there's still a little white showing around inside that pink.
and then I am wash my brush because our next color is going to be blue and it's going to be very light blue, little bit of blue and white. And that goes under the yellow. You can leave a little space because after the blue, we're going to do green in between the blue and the yellow. And that goes in between the blue and the yellow. And I did the blue first because it's a primary color. Yeah, it's the red and blue and red, white, and blue. So the colors of the American flag all mixed together are purple. And then now that I've got all my colors, I'm going to take my larger brush and starting at one, and I'm just gonna kind of smooth them out and blend them together here. There we go. I just had a couple of ridges of paint near the bottom that I wanted to be smoother. And then while you guys are doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences in the master painting that we were being inspired by this one here. And the one that I did today, because actually I painted this one kind of in a hurry because I was like, yeah, I just saw this beautiful thing. I want to go home and paint it right away. And I wasn't very careful about my proportions. Um, here you can see this looks a lot more like Pololu than this does. I feel like this cliff, it just makes a little bit more sense visually. And then the rainbow has a like softer arc than this one. And those are things that I put my painting up. I looked at it a whole bunch myself. And the more I looked at it, um, there was a couple things that drew my attention. Usually every time I paint something, the next time it gets a little bit better. Um, the really like professional level academic artists are doing a lot of small paintings before they do a big painting because then they get all the practice and the mistakes and the things, and those are called studies. So they do a bunch of studies before they do a masterpiece. And so let's call this the study. And this is more what I would call a finished painting that I would want to sell. So when I've taught something about 25 times, um, it, it's just a lot easier for me to teach. And everyone's like, this is a beginner painting. But that, that painting I'm specifically thinking of was actually one of the more advanced paintings when I wasn't as fluent at teaching it. So every time I teach, I get better. And every time you paint, you get better. And the more we do stuff, the better we get. So to keep on going, and when you look at something and make little changes as you go. And those are all the steps. So actually, we could wrap this up. Aloha. Give them peace and love and positivity. But give them what they want. Better give them what they need. Give them peace and love and positivity. But give them what they want. Better give them what they need.